We've been kind of touching uh, on some of the dispensations and covenants relative to the Old Testament and even uh, going into the New. Um, and again, you know, I said last week, a couple weeks ago, that I wasn't necessarily going to commit to walking us through the dispensations. And I'm still not going to commit to that, but I am going to go forward in that vein tonight. Um, I believe this is what the Lord would have for us to share. Uh, so we're going to proceed um, going forward in the covenants and dispensations. We talked um, probably five or six weeks ago about uh, the first covenant dispensation, that being the Edenic covenant, the covenant God made in Eden, mm -hmm. uh, bringing about the dispensation of innocence. We dealt with that and how uh, that is the state that God desires to bring us back to. Yes. Uh, that is the place that God intends for a man to get back to um, because Eden, again, is not necessarily a place, <coughs> but Eden is a frame of life. It is a lifestyle. It is uh, an attitude. It is a mindset. And that's what God is attempting to get us. And we dealt with that for a couple of weeks. Then we progressed over to talking about the next dispensation, which was the Adamic uh, covenant, uh, bringing about the dispensation of conscience. And we dealt for the last two or three weeks about some of the side effects, if you will, or some of the effects <coughs> of conscience. How that conscience does create struggle in various areas. And we went on and went on and in those things. And tonight, um, I'm going to go a little further, bring us into the third covenant, uh, which is the Noahic covenant covenant that God made with Noah, the Noahic covenant. So you'll say like Noah <laughs> with ick behind it. The Noahic covenant. N-O-A-H-I-C. The Noahic covenant. This covenant brings us or brought about the dispensation of human government. Okay, Pastor, save y'all all kind of review questions tonight. Hmm. I just gave you all the answers. So probably before I leave, I'll get a review just to make sure that it's endless. But the third covenant, the Noahic covenant, is the covenant whereby God allowed there to be brought about the dispensation of human government. Uh, Minister Black, it was not in my mind, so to speak, when God brought us into this particular time of teaching uh, about any uh, political mm. climate. It yes, wasn't sir. even in my uh, realm of thinking about uh, any election or that wasn't even my, my focus. But when I was <laughs> meditating yes, sir. and God said, son, do you see the time That's amazing. of how I'm bringing you to this place today. Wow. And I said, well, God, yeah, I see it. And so um, tonight, even though we're teaching on the Noahic Covenant, human government, all those great things, the title I'm going to use tonight is simply this, Sister Akasha, God is in control. Yes, yes, yes. yes, yes. Clean. God is in control. Now, before I get into that, we're going to find ourselves in Genesis 9 tonight. So let me just do a little bit of preliminary groundwork uh, since I'm here. All right? Uh, um, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 13, verse number 8, this is a very, this is a very simple scripture to remember. Uh, Hebrews 13, 8 says this, Mr. Black. Jesus Christ, the same yes. yesterday, yes, today, yes. and forever. Yes. All right? So, Sister Kasha, when you went to bed on Sunday night, Jesus was Jesus. Yes. When you woke up this morning, yes. he was still Jesus. Amen. Jesus is, bro, Foster, the same. <laughs> Yesterday, uh -huh. today, yes. and, forevermore. and forevermore. If Jesus is unchanged, mm. and Jesus is the same, it really does not matter yes. what happens in or to my life. Yes. Right. Jesus is still the same. Amen. I had to trust them three weeks ago. Yes. I'm going to have to trust them three weeks from now. Yes. Glory. 
So regardless of a President Trump bump or stump, yes, yes sir. The reality is Jesus is still the same. Yeah. All right. All right. So, so if Jesus is the caution, has not changed, brother Nick, his expectation of us. Yeah. Oh, oh. Amen. yeah. His expectation of us has not changed, <laughs> nor does he expect us to change. Amen. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. This okay. is good, sir. So, so, so regardless of things that happen and that go on in life, regardless of things that take place in my day, mm -hmm. Jesus is still the same. Yes, sir. So if Jesus is the same, I should not be moved by things that occur in my life, yes. to my life, or around my life, because the man that's in my life is still the same. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Never the, 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 Bible, Never <laughs> the Bible says, I, I'm in the book already, like Sister Kasha, and I feel good about it. And I'm going to stay teaching tonight. I ain't going to do no preaching. Uh, the Bible says, I gave you 13 and 8 of Hebrews. Again, let me just for those that came there, in case you missed that one. Please. Jesus Christ the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. All right? Jesus is always the same. That's Hebrews 13 8. Now check this out. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 9, Verse 6. This is going to mess with this a little bit when she was teaching Sunday school. All right. All right. He says, uh, uh, and his name shall be called Wonderful, uh -huh. Counselor, yes. Prince of Peace, Mighty God, the Everlasting Father. In the seventh verse, Isaiah chapter 9, yes. verse 6 is what I just gave you. The seventh verse says, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. All right. So if Jesus, digging is black, is the same, Yesterday, today, forever. Yes, sir. And the government yeah. is on his shoulder. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Yesterday, today, and forever. Okay, yes, sir. Ever. It really doesn't matter who's running yeah. Yeah. the government mm -hmm. because the shoulders haven't changed. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, I like this yeah. is good, sir. Thank oh God, I, I, I'm getting excited tonight, brother, and I'm trying to stay. I'm trying to stay calm because you got your wife with you, and I want her to come back. All right. Uh, <laughs> the reality is. <laughs> When I recognize, <laughs> Sister Thompson, that my life is in the hands of one that does not change, mm -hmm. it causes me not to be unstable. Oh. Yes, wow. That's a good word, sir. It causes me to be settled. Paul put it this way. He said, whatever state I'm in, that's mm -hmm. Philippians 4 and 11. Mm -hmm. Whatever state I'm in, I learn how to be content. Yes. Good. I know how to be abased. And I know how to abound. Yes. I know how to suffer lack. And I know how to live in abundance. Yes, Wherever I find myself, I'm actually all right. Yes. Now, the thing about it is, and I, I, I'm going to get to human government. I promise this is going to make sense before I get out of here tonight. The thing I got to realize is there's a stability in my life because the one who hand my life is in is stable. Amen. So if Jesus isn't shaky mm -hmm. with my life, my life has no reason to become shaky. My God. Yes, sir. Because the one who's controlling my life has a steady hand. Mm -hmm. The only time, oh God, I'm going to get in trouble. The only time my life starts getting shaky mm -hmm. is when I take my life out of his hand. Mm -hmm. Amen. How about that? When I decide I'm going to do me, mm -hmm. when I decide I'm going to flow in my own van. That's where I start getting all instable. Correct. That's when my faith start waving. That's, right. That's when Shaking. fear starts showing up. Mm -hmm. Because I took my hand, my life, out of the hand that wasn't changing. Uh -huh. yes. mm -hmm. All right. So, so, so the government, <laughs> the government is upon his shoulders. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, let me go a step further. The Bible says in, in Isaiah chapter 33, verse number 22, he says, you know, the Lord is our judge, the Lord is our lawgiver, the Lord is our king. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't have to say nothing else. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, 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 he's my judge. Bible. Yeah. He's my lawgiver. Mm -hmm. He's my king. Yeah. So if God is my king, mm -hmm. doesn't matter if my president's name is Obama, Reagan, 
Nixon, FDR, Trump, whoever else going to come down the line. I've got a king, I've got a lawgiver, and I've got a judge that's not unstable. Mm -hmm. So what God is requiring from the church is that even in this current environment that we find ourselves being stable. Let me help you understand what stability is, Sister, uh, Sister Akasha. <laughs> uh, one that is stable, yeah. D, is not given to change. <clears throat> all right? All right? When one is stable, just giving you a little introduction before I get where we're going tonight. When one is stable, Brother Foster, they're not given to change. What does that mean? That means that when change happens and stuff that makes other people lose their mind and mm. lose their hair and lose sleep start happening because I'm not <coughs> given to that lifestyle. I don't find myself losing any sleep, losing any hair, or losing any weight <laughs> because I'm comfortable in the hands that I'm in. All right, All right. Let, 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 let me do this plain, then I'm gonna guess, I'm gonna get into the scripture. Let me say, I don't even know how many more statements you're going to hear your pastor say about President Trump as it relates to where we are. I don't know how much more y'all need to hear me talk about it because it don't even really phase me, to be honest. But let me, let, me, let me tell you this. This is my expectation from God to the people of God because this is what he expects of me. I can't say that I'm not worried about him being the president and he's the only thing I talk about. Mm. Don't make sense. Don't think about God. I'm, you know, we want we big and bad, we spiritual. Oh God, from time you know, we got the Lord. It's time to pray. We need to go on 30 day consecration. We ready to <laughs> preach the greatest sermon in America. But in the midst of preaching it, we want to go back to oh, he want to build a wall. Listen, let me help us. If we're gonna trust that our life is in the stable hands of Christ, yes, sir. We can't always be the ones. Throwing up who our, like, who our lives are in the hands of as related to Donald Trump. Let me help you. Let me make it plain. If I'm going to say that the Lord is my king, then if he's the king, it don't matter who the president is. Let me help you understand the Lord is the king. All right? All right. So, so, so the king is above everything. Even biblically, uh, the presidents were under the king. Mm -hmm. So, so I mean, that's, in, that's in Daniel. The Bible says, you know, that Daniel, was he was appointed as a president over the affairs in the kingdom. But even though he was a president, he was still under King Darius. Mm -hmm. right. Which means that the king has the final say. Mm -hmm. The president can act as crazy or as uncrazy as he wants to. Mm -hmm. But the king has the final say. Amen. So if I'm going to believe, just like, and I love him then with President Obama. I love him, but he still wasn't God. Right. Huh. Right. <clears throat> he wasn't God. Yeah. Had the final say. That's right. Because God has got the final say. Yes, sir. God's in control. All right, let, 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 me, let me get one go, go to Genesis chapter 9. I'm trying to teach you tonight on, we, we're dealing with the Noahic covenant. The Noahic covenant brought about human government. All right, human government is what came about the Noahic covenant. So God gave covenant to Noah. We're going to go to Genesis chapter 9. We're going to look at uh, the first seven verses. We're going to jump around a little bit in Genesis 9 so that we can make some good points tonight as it relates to the construct God intended by uh, bringing about this dispensation of human government. Genesis chapter 9, the first verse says this, And God blessed Noah and his sons, said unto them, this is the covenant, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. And the fear of you, the respect or the dread of you, shall be upon every beast of the field and upon every fowl of the air, upon all that moveth upon the earth and upon all the fishes of the sea. Into your hand are they delivered. All right? Every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you. Eat what you want to eat. Even as the green herb have I given you all things. Mm -hmm. But flesh with the life thereof, stuff that's still moving, which is the blood thereof, ye shall not eat. And surely your blood of your lives will I require. 
At the hand of every beast will I require it, and at the hand of man, at the hand of every man's brother, will I require the life of man. Who shall shed his blood, who shall shed his man's blood, by man shall his blood be shed. For in the image of God made he man. And you, be ye fruitful and multiply, bring forth abundantly in the earth and multiply therein. Here we identify God speaking to Noah and saying, I'm making a covenant with you. What will rule this covenant is the order of God executed through mankind. The Noahic covenant, which is what about human government, shows us that God was putting in place order in the earth. Whereas men would be over everything that's in the earth. And that man is not just male, uh, you know, that's humanity. He made humanity to be the authoritative figure in the earth. Now, Minister Black, if God would have just made this covenant to one man, then we could say that God was moving out of the way and letting a man take his place. Mm -hmm. But because God made this to all men that were on the earth, the understanding behind the Noahic covenant mm -hmm. is that God never intended for there to be a monarch. Mm -hmm. God never intended <laughs> for there to be a type of just one leader and that's it. The intention of God, Brother Foster, is that he looked at the men. There were eight people on the earth at this time. Noah, his wife, his three sons, and their wives. That was it. He looked at these eight people, and he said, I'm charging you to make sure you're looking out for each other. I I'm, I'm going to teach you tonight if you let me. I'm charging you to take the responsibility to be your brother's keeper. I'm charging you to not let mankind get out of whack again because y'all gonna keep each other in balance. Uh -huh. I'm trying to help you. I pray you're listening and that you're getting it tonight. The charge of the church is not just to be the pastor's people. Mm -hmm. The charge of the church is for us to be each other's keeper. That's right. good. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. So it, it ought not be a situation that says, well, I ain't going to deal with that because, you know, you look, you know, that's a little funny. I'm going to just wait till the pastor say something. That's outside of the governing authority God has given to you. Teaching. If you know, who can I deal with? Brother Graham, yeah, he ready. If you know Brother Graham got an alcohol problem, mm -hmm. you ought not tell. I'm going to wait the pastor identified by the spirit to bust his bubble. Yeah. When you saw him drink, you should have went and took the bottle. Yeah. 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 Because in human government, I've got a responsibility to look out for my brother. This is good. But no, you see somebody marriage on the rocks and it's shambles, and instead of you giving them the wisdom of God, you want to talk about how all men ain't nothing. Mm -hmm. Teach the night. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, do it. Instead of giving them the wisdom of God, girl, let's stand in this thing together. No, I can remember, you know, my husband was treating me bad too, and I wanted to leave. I'm going to just tell you the truth. How is that helping me? Mm -hmm. Whatever happened to us taking a stand to say, I'm going to take the responsibility of my brother on myself. I'm going to take the responsibility of my sister on myself and be their keeper because that's what God has anointed me to be. Yeah. Exactly. This is good. He's anointed me in the term of go human government, not for me to have to trust and depend on one man, one president, one whomever, to meet all our needs. We supposed to be able to meet each other's needs. Mm -hmm. God say, I'm putting order in the earth. First issue we identify in human government is that when pride comes, human government will fall. Mm. That's noteworthy right there. When pride comes, human government will fall. I'll say it again. When pride comes, human government <laughs> will fall. So when Pastor Hinton says, He's never concerned. Now, I'm a vote because I'm supposed to do that, Brother bro, bro Green. That's mm -hmm. my civic and kingdom duty and responsibility. Mm -hmm. And uh, every two years, every six <clears throat> months, however often there is an election, I'm going to be informed and I'm going to vote because that's my responsibility. However, even though I am voting for a person, mm -hmm. my confidence is mm -hmm. in my king. Right. Yes, sir. 
So I got a responsibility understanding that in this, when God allows or puts in place one in leadership, that leader will never be sustained when they're challenged with pride. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Whenever God puts somebody in place as the grip or allows somebody to be put in place of leadership, whenever <laughs> pride shows up in their lives, God is no longer with them as a leader. Hmm. Well, Pastor, what does that do for the people? The people ought to have enough sense to know that even though I got a leader, the leader is not my God. Right, right. So as long as I'm connected to my God, yes. if my leader gets out of place, Guess who's going to deal with him? God. God is. So I'm still covered even when I got a janky leader. I hope somebody catches yes. this. I, I, I hope somebody is catching this tonight. That the leader is not. Now the intention is for the leader to be a depiction of the people. But when pride and arrogance show up, God says, I'm, then not, no, I'm no longer connected to the leader. So at that point, the representation has to be me and not the leader. Mm -hmm. All right, um, do it and now we okay. So even when I go to work, yeah. and I'm working for a man or a woman that I know is evil, mm -hmm. God, how am I supposed to handle that? Well, we've already identified the evilness. Therefore, God is saying I'm no longer connected to the leader. Mm -hmm. So now, while you're on the job. You ain't, you, well, you shouldn't have been doing this no way, but you're no longer working for the man. You're working as unto me. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. So, therefore, Teacher. when success follows, it's going to be connected to you mm. and not your boss. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Thank God. Yeah. Oh, God, help me. Yeah, just take it. Okay. Right. So, when, when I've got a person, Sister Greer, that I identify as being a leader in my life, and if I cannot see God, whether that's a pastor, whether that's my parent, oh, I'm going to get in trouble, whether that's my guardian, or whether that's my boss, if I cannot see God in my leader, go a step further, here now, whether that's my pastor, my parent, my guardian, my boss, or my husband, mm. wherever God cannot be seen in the leader, God says, I'm not going to hold you accountable wow. of your leader's fallacy wow. if you stay connected to me. Wow. Mm. Okay. Key, though. Okay. Key, key. Okay. Mm. Stay connected. Okay. Uh, okay. So, 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 is black. If, 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 if I've got, <laughs> um, no, let, let, let me, let me, let me do this. Uh, I, okay. First lady. I, I, I use first lady. So, so first lady, if, if you've got a horrible boss, uh, a horrible pastor, a horrible husband, um, uh, a horrible president, uh, and a horrible any other leader that's in your life. And you make a determination that in the face of all this horribleness, mm -hmm. I'm still going to keep my commitment to God. Yeah. God says what happens now, Sister Lipscomb, is I step in mm -hmm. and I become your boss. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Your husband, yeah. mm -hmm. your leader, wow. your pastor. Why? Because you connected to me when you saw me leave the man. Mm. Mm. Exactly. Human government was designed that we would be able to keep each other in balance. The design was that these sons, check this out, Brother Foster, these sons were commanded of God to keep themselves in check, and to honor their father. I, I, want, I want us to catch this, Benjamin Graham. You can use this in your preaching, because this is going to be a preachable point. <laughs> right. um, God says, in this covenant, you've got a responsibility as brothers to watch out for each other and to honor your authority. All right? Your responsibility, I hope we're hearing this, is look out for each other as sisters, but also honor your authority. Mm -hmm. Say it one more time. You've got a responsibility in this covenant of human government to look out for your brothers, 
and to honor your leader. Okay, what, one more time. You've got a responsibility to look out for each other and to honor your leader. Right? God speaks this and says, as a side effect of this covenant, I'm going to now send blessing over your life that when you look out for your brother and you cover your leader, I'm going to bless you. That's all connected to the Noahic covenant. Mm -hmm. So he says, when clouds come in the sky, because we know with Noah, in case you didn't know, I'm going to just give you a little reader's digest condensed version real quick. All right, okay. Noah was the man that built the ark, in case we didn't know. Okay, so the flood of water came, wiped all creation out except for these eight people, Noah, his sons, and their wives. All right, these eight people wiped everybody out. The flood was on the earth for a little over a year. Uh, nothing happened, no, no nothing, but just everybody died, all right? God says, I'm never going to destroy the earth that way again, mm -hmm. okay? So whenever you see, you know, clouds in the sky, I'm going to send a rainbow. Mm -hmm. And this rainbow is going to be my sign from heaven to you that I remember the covenant I made that I'm never going to destroy the earth again, mm -hmm. but I'm also going to bless you for honoring your leader and looking out for each other. Mm -hmm. Please understand this tonight. That the, the rainbow is a good sign as it relates to God not destroying the earth with water no more. But it's also a sign Lord. that I'm going to bless you mm -hmm. when you look out for your brother mm -hmm. and you honor your leader. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. So as the story progressed, Minister Black, mm -hmm. we identify that one day Noah, who has just brought forth to receive the word from God, had just heard the covenant promises of God. He builds a vineyard. He becomes a husbandman. He becomes uh, a tiller of, of, of things out of the earth. He grows some vines and things like that. And uh, the Bible says that he began to drink of the vine. And Mr. Black, the scripture says that Noah got drunk. Mm -hmm. All right? Noah, the man of God, the leader of his house, uh, the man that God says has found grace in my sight, a man that is honorable, a man that I love, has now taken my covenant and found himself drunk. Mm -hmm. All right? Noah's drunk, Minister Black. And the Bible says that while he was in his tent, laid out in his drunken state. So wow. false. I'm in the script. You're in the Bible. I ain't, ain't going to make you think I am. I'm going to show you. Go, go to Genesis chapter 9. All right? All right, ver verse 20, where, where I'm going to start. Genesis chapter 9, verse 20. Same chapter we're in, just the 20th verse. The Bible says, And Noah began to be a husbandman. He planted a vineyard. And he drank of the wine and was drunken. And he was uncovered within his tent. 